Yeah, uh, well, it's an easy question, but I guess a difficult answer. Um, you changed the shame in your eyes yes. to pride. How do you do that? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> good question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it, so first of all, my iceberg may not be your iceberg. You create your own iceberg. For me, uh, what I did was I went to a thesaurus and I just looked at the opposite of pride or, or shame, and it's pride. So there's that. <laughs> but community has been a big part of that. And, and the thing is, it's not that you have shame one day and pride the next. There are days, there are weeks, there are minutes where it's like, oh, like, don't, like, do not surprise me at a drive through I don't know if you have drive throughs in Iceland. Yeah, no, like, everything is a drive through in California because we won't get out of our cars for anything. Um, <laughs> and so we have to order. And once I was off to a comedy competition, and I was going to be all there, I was going to be active, I was going to do it, um, and I drove to a McDonald's first. And I told all my friends who are comics in the car, I was like, do you want anything? And they're like, no. I'm like, okay, I'm ordering my Diet Coke, and that's it. And then they, as, as soon as I got up to this uh, speaker, they're like, oh, I want a cheeseburger, I want fries. I want, uh, and I froze. I froze. And it was part of that shame, part of that fear, all that iceberg stuff. And, there, uh, and then after that, they were like, but you get up on stage and you talk all the time. I'm all, yeah, but it's the McDonald's uh, speaker. That's, that's, <laughs> that is really, really so scary. Um, and I think, I'm so glad you asked this as the final thing because I think we get very hard on ourselves. And, and I've seen this a lot, especially at the NSA where it's like you have to have pride or you're in shame. It's a continuum, and you hop from it all the time, and it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be pretty, it's not cut and dry, everybody has their own path in this, and for me, I have, you know, I am lucky enough to be from the Bay Area, where my, my, my Michael Sh Sugarman's from, I found the NSP when I was 17 years old, I started to go and volunteer there, I thought that that if you found a job that you could get paid for and you talked at that you were fine like like that was the bar i worked for and it was kind of coming from a working class family where it is work and as long as you have work you're fine um and once i got that i was like oh i it's my stuttering isn't it impacting me it impacted me every which way and it held me back in a lot of ways because of how I thought about it. And so I think the best way to find pride is to be exposed to different things. And also to think about pride not as whoa, whoa, whoa waving a flag, although we don't have a stuttering flag, um, but it's not that. It's more about stuttering and talking with your true uh, uh, authentic self it is doing the things that you want to do and furthering the cause of helping the world see stuttering in a different way. And I know that if you're in this room, you are part of that. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you to all our Iceland friends for everything.